All right, this exam is uh, fall 2021, um, exam two, and we're gonna work it. Okay, true or false? Streamlines show the path of individual particles in a flow through time. That is false, streamlines show the path of, or they show the instantaneous velocity of all particles at a, at a particular time, so that's false. Um, the buoyant force on a basketball, the same, whether it's fully or partially submerged. Um, if you don't remember, the buoyant force is uh, the gamma of the fluid times the volume displaced. So if the ball is underwater, um, you know, and it's fully, oh, sorry, if it's underwater versus not all the way underwater, the, the volume displaced is going to change. So clearly this is false. Um, the Brunelian equation assumes that the flow is uniform. That's a false. Um, it does assume steadiness, but not uniformity. Um, turbulent flow in pipes tends to have a more uniform mean velocity profile than laminar flow in pipes. And that is true due to uh, greater mixing. So, you know, your laminar flow um, in a pipe is parabolic. And your turbulent flow due to, uh, you know, more uh, effective mixing of the momentum from the middle out and from the walls in uh, tends to be more uniform. So um, we're going to go with um, true here. Okay, the partial derivative of velocity with respect to time is called the convective. No, this is called the local acceleration. So we, would, we could have fixed that by calling it the local. Okay, and that's just a you know, vocabulary word, really. Um, an object submerged in mercury will have a smaller buoyant force acting on it than when it is submerged in water. So again, if we look over here, it is the buoyancy, it is the specific weight of the fluid that matters here. And so if you have a, a more dense mercury, uh, fluid like mercury, um, then um, it's going to have a larger, larger buoyant force than when it's submerged in water. So this is false. Uh, if the Reynolds number is in a pipe, it's 500. The flow is usually classified as turbulent. That is false. The cutoff is Reynolds number greater than about 2,000 to 4,000 before we start calling it turbulent. Uh, negative absolute pressure is impossible. This is true. Um, you can get negative gauge pressure because gauge pressure is relative to atmospheric pressure. Uh, yeah, sorry. Gauge pressure is relative to atmospheric pressure. Um, so you can go below atmospheric pressure, but you can't go below zero absolute. Uh, that means you've got negative molecules in there, which can't exist. Um, number nine, greater volume water flows into the tank that leaves the tank. So you've got a little tank here and you've got like some water coming in, you've got some water leaving. And if more is, if more is coming in and just a little bit is trickling out, well, then the water level should be rising and the water level. So it says fall here. So that would be wrong. So we'll go with false. We've got a lot of falses on this one. Uh, pressure divided by elevation is called the pressure head. Pressure divided by elevation is called nothing. Like, that's a nothing thing. Um, so <laughs> we're just going to call that false. Um, the correct answer here would be pressure divided by the specific weight of the fluid. Okay, so uh, moving on. So, um, yeah, so two trues on number four and number seven. Um, is that seven? Eight, excuse me. <laughs> see one two let's just make sure I actually got 10 here it kind of looks a little short no it's fine okay all right so let's go down here um, ice has a density of uh, that number 0.91 grams per centimeter cubed first thing we might want to do is convert that um, if you do convert that you're gonna get that to be 910 kilograms per cubic meter imagine if, if you have a cube of ice 10 centimeters on a side um, okay you know, you might want to convert that to, you know, um, 0 0.1 meter. Um, what is the cube's weight? Okay, weight in fluids class is gamma times the volume. So let's zoom in on my calculations here. Um, so the gamma in this case is rho g times the volume. Okay, so this is all of the ice. So maybe I should put a little i, i for the volume of the ice, right? So the weight is... Well, the density of the ice is right there, so 910 kilograms per cubic meter, okay, times the gravity in the uh, SI system is 9.81 meters per second cubed, 
And then the volume of the ice, well, it's a cube, so it's going to be 0 0.1 meters per side. Okay, so if we uh, multiply all of that out, we get uh, 8.9271 newtons. And because I like three sig figs, we'll do 8.93 newtons. Okay, so that's part A. Okay, part B. What volume of liquid water must be displaced in order to support the cube? Okay, so now we've got the water. I mean, we've got the, the thing and it's in a, you know, uh, you know, here's my ice cube. Here's my free body diagram. Okay, and I've got uh, force of buoyancy going up and I've got the weight going down. Okay, so uh, this is in equilibrium. Um, so we can say the sum of the forces in the vertical direction is zero. So the force of buoyancy minus the weight equals zero. Uh, well, we know the weight right here. And the formula for the force of buoyancy is the gamma of the fluid, which in this case is liquid water. Gamma, let's not put an F then, let's put uh, gamma W. Okay, times the volume displaced. Volume displaced minus the weight equals zero. Okay, so we can just plug all that, all that in. Okay, so the gamma of water is 9810 newtons per meters cubed times the volume displaced, minus the weight, which is, uh, oh, it's right here, 8.93, oh, sorry, we want to use at least 5, 8.9271 newtons equals 0. So the volume displaced equals, ugh, okay, lots of zeros, 0. 0.00091. Cubic meters. Um, if you wanted to, you could do this in, I guess, cubic centimeters, uh, since you know we've kind of we're set up for that over here, right? Um, but um, I'm just going to leave it like this because why would I give myself more work? Okay, so that's uh, 9.10 times 10 to the negative. Uh, uh, let's see, one, two, three, four, four meters cubed. Okay. So last thing, how much of the cube is under the surface of the water? You could have answered this any number of ways. Um, you know, I didn't really give you a lot of guidance here. Um, so how much of the cube is underwater? So we know this is the total of volume that's underwater. And we know this right here, that's the total volume of the cube itself. So I can get a, it as a percentage. That's a pretty straightforward way to start. So I can say the percent underwater equals the volume displaced divided by the total volume of the of the ice right okay so we can say okay well then that mm, you know, oh don't do that what what are you doing get out of here okay so I was oh, son of a okay <laughs> percent underwater equals the volume displaced 9.10 times 10 to the minus fourth meters cubed divided by the volume of the ice, which is 0 0.1 meters cubed. I never calculated that number. Um, so the percent underwater um, I think it's 91 percent, but it's going to be, well, I've got it, I've got this written kind of as a decimal, right? So I guess I should have said times 100 percent, times 100 percent. And let's just go, let's make this 91.0 uh, percent. Okay, so I would have been fine with that. If you'd wanted to, you could have said, okay, well, it's look, it's uh, 10 centimeters on a side. Okay, and so, you know, here's the thing. Uh, so, you know, this is 9.10 centimeters underwater. And you could have noted that it was uh, 0 0.9 centimeters above water. Okay, so that would have been fine too. Okay, and I'm sure there's probably a few other acceptable ways to answer this one, but that's kind of what I'm going with right now. Okay, let's see, we're moving on. Okay, consider the steady flow in a pipe joint shown in the diagram. The areas give you the areas, they give you how much water is lost out of, four flow, out of hole at four um, with a flow rate of 0 0.1 cubic meters per second. Okay, um, the average speeds at uh, given sections, find the velocity of section two. Okay, the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to assume a direction at velocity two. Um, 
I think on my other key I did it with, a, with an assumed a different direction, but I'm going to assume it's going out, okay? Um, just because it just kind of looks like it's going out to me. Okay, so um, let's go ahead and uh, solve this problem then, okay? So n equals, this is continuity plus accumulation. Okay, we note in this case there's no accumulation in the pipe, so this is going to go away. And I've only got one thing coming in, and that's going to be the mass flow rate at 1. So rho V1 A1 equals out. I've got uh, pipes 2 and 3. Rho V2 A2 plus rho V3 A3. Okay, and then I've got whatever is leaking out at uh, location 4. Um, and that one is a little different because they actually get us, give us the flow rate. So I'm just going to add Q4. And once I've done that, I can go ahead and, uh, oh, excuse me, not row, uh, Q4, but row Q4, right? Row Q4. Okay, so, um, so now that we're there, um, the next thing we need to do is, well, we should probably make note of the fact that all these rows are the same, so they cancel right out, so we're not going to worry about those. And then we just plug in. Okay, so V1 is 5 meters per second. Okay, this becomes a bit of a bookkeeping mess, right? Area 1 is 0 0.2 meters squared, Not squared, equals, okay, V2 is, oh, that's what we're looking for, A2 is 0 0.2 meters, square, square meters, um, plus, now we need V3, it's right here, ooh, that's a big number, um, and then A3 is 0 0.15, Right, and then Q4. Where's Q4? Uh, Q4, oh, it's the, oh yeah, that's right, it's what's leaving it. Up. So that's at 0 0.1 cubic meters per second. Okay, so now we plug this into the calculator and we solve it. And we get a negative 4.50 meters per second. Okay, which means that I assumed I assumed it was in and it's actually out. So uh, V2, excuse me, I assumed it was out and it's actually in. So it equals negative 4.50 meters per second in. Okay. Boom. All right. A one meter pipe. Okay, so this is, to my mind, maybe this is the hardest one. I don't really know. I'm going to quick, quickly draw a free body diagram here. Okay, so this is going to be the pipe and the water. So let's go ahead and write, you know, free body diagram of pipe and the water. And I have to include the pipe because that is, because I want the force on the pipe to anchor it, right? What is the vertical force required to hold the pipe in place? Okay, so that's clearly one of my forces here. Force uh, to anchor the pipe. Okay, I've also got weights. I got to hold up the weight of the water. And I gotta hold up the weight of the pipe. Okay, and then let's see what else do we have. Um, let's see, maybe if I use red for this. Um, we've got a pressures on these faces because we just cut the pipe for this, right? Um, and we'll call these, uh, this will be P1A1. This will be P2A2. And then, um, let's see, and then I've also got, you know, kind of cutting right through the middle of that. I've got V1 and I've got V2, right? So those are my momentum fluxes. Okay, so what we can do at this point is we can go ahead and, um, I think that's everything. Um, yeah, well, the only other thing that's, you know, pretty important here is this angle right here, which is 30 degrees. Okay, so let's go ahead and um, let's solve this sucker. Okay, so the momentum equation, some of the forces, it wants the vertical direction, so we're only gonna do Z plus the sum in of the momentum fluxes. Uh, rho VZQ equals the sum out of the momentum fluxes. Rho VZQ. Okay, so I think uh, what's one nice thing to note right here is that in the, um, in the Z direction, all this stuff that's happening over here doesn't matter. Okay, um, so we won't worry about that because that doesn't have a Z component. Okay, so the sum of the forces in the Z. Okay, so let's see here. We've got P1A1. Okay, but that's at about a, a, an angle, so we're going to say sine of theta. 
Let's see here. I'm going to subtract the two weights of the water, weight of water minus the weight of the pipe plus F anchor, right? And that's it. Um, so then I've got these, um, this uh, influx of this momentum flux in, and it appears that we don't have one of those in the vertical direction. And then we've got the, the fluxes going out, and that's this V2. So we'll go ahead and do that on the other side. And so we've got rho. Uh, now remember, this is rho magma. Ooh, in fact, that's a good point. I wrote water here, didn't I? When this is actually magma. Okay, excuse me. Um, a, risky, um, a risky error, right? Because, you know, you could put in... Um, Instead of putting in a thousand, you know, we need to put in twenty six fifty because of this this number right here. Okay, so uh, row M, and then this V Z here at V two is negative uh, V two sine of theta times Q. Okay, so let's see what don't we know here? Um, let's see before we you know solve this. I mean, this is. This is pretty good, but we're gonna need some things, I think. Let's see here, uh, we've got liquid magma. So that means that the gamma of magma and the rho, the rho of magma is 2650 um, kilograms per cubic meter, because we just multiply this by 1,000, right? I don't think we need gamma of M, but if we did, it would be 2.65 times 9810. Um, anyway, um, what else do we need? Oh, we need this V. We need V2. Okay, so here's, we're going to do a little aside over here to get our velocity. So V equals Q on A. So V equals, the flow rate here is 0 0.5 meters cubed per second, C CMS. Okay, and we're going to divide that by um, the area, which of course is going to be pi times uh, 1 meter diameter. 1 meter squared divided by 4. So V equals, it's like, oh, here we go, 0 0.63662 meters per second, okay? And we're going to plug that in over here on the, on the left in a second. Um, what about the weight of the pipe? No, the weight of the liquid mag, the weight of the magma. Let's go ahead and just get that right here. The weight, it's not really that complicated, but the weight of the magma, where's the weight of the magma? Oh, right, so it's going to be... Uh, Let's see, so we need um, <laughs> gamma of the magma times the volume of the magma. Okay, so uh, the weight of the magma equals uh, 2.65 times 9810 newtons per meter cubed. Okay, times the volume of the magma. The volume of the magma in the band is four cubic meters. Okay, so this is gonna give us an answer in newtons. Weight of the magma. So let's see here, um, you know, a hefty 103,990 newtons. Okay, that seems like a lot. Okay, so that's what, tw that's more or less 20,000 pounds. Um, it's you know, pretty, pretty healthy. Okay, so um, let's see, let's give us a, let's kind of anchor that in. All right, so now we're ready to just start plugging stuff in. So the pressures everywhere in this pipe were 75 uh, kilonewtons. Okay, the area of this sucker, of that opening, is pi times one meter squared on four. Okay, sine of a 30 degree angle. Kind of minus the weight of the magma, which um, I believe I just plugged in, as, or I just solved as 103,990 newtons minus the weight of the pipe which is actually given as 2.40 kilo or 2.4 kilonewtons which means basically uh it doesn't even matter. <laughs> um I guess you know that's what happens when you make up problems, right? F anchor um equals the rho of the magma which is 2.60 times the rho of the water. Let's let's give myself some space by keeping this a little bit vertical if you will. Kilo come on, you can do it. Come on, kilograms per meter cubed. Um, and then uh, negative V2, negative two point, no, sorry, zero 
0.63662 meters per second. Sine of 30 degrees times Q. Okay, so I'm gonna have to like create a little space here. Um, so I think it's you know half a meter per second. Okay, 0 0.5 meter or cubic meters per second. Okay. And if we check the units there, cubic meters, cubic meters, I'm left with kilograms, meters, seconds squared. So that's a Newton. We've got a Newton here. We've got a Newton here. We've got, uh, oh, right, this, is, this was incorrect. This is supposed to be meters squared. Um, come on, you could do it. I guess this should be meters squared on the bottom. So if you do that, then this cancels with that, and you're left with newtons. Okay, so the units are going to work out here. And so um, just for, you know, interest, we will, um, what's the word? Let's see, so this will be uh, 29,452 newtons. That's a pretty good-sized number. Uh, this 103,000 is more dominant than that. This uh, 2.4 kilonewtons doesn't even matter plus F anchor equals, now this stuff on the right, if you do all of that, negative 421.76 Newtons. So all that work and, you know, the magma is not even moving fast enough to really uh, affect it. Um, so really, you know, what's going on here is the magma is um, really heavy. So this anchoring force is primarily dealing with that. Um, equals 76,516 uh, newtons. Okay, so basically it's, it's heavy, but the pressure is holding it up partially. Okay, uh, and these other ones don't really matter. So the F of the anchor equals 7.65 kilonewtons upwards. I guess if I give it a direction, I should you know, add the, uh, the arrow there. Okay, um, all right, let's go do this last one over here. Oh, you know I love these. These are my favorites. Okay, so um, I'm going to create some space for some asides. You know, these are my asides. Okay, and now, you know, with this sort of problem, one thing we know right off the bat, probably, is that we're almost certainly going to put our points here at 1 and here at 2 because that's where we have information from the manometer. Um, and uh, so, I don't know. What, what are we looking for? We're looking for flow rate of the kerosene, which means, basically it means I need the velocity, right? Because if I have the velocity and I have the areas, then I'm good to go. So usually what we're going to do in this case is we're going to use Bernoulli. Um, but the thing that's stopping me of doing Bernoulli is, you know, well, you know, can I use it? And usually if you say, if it says negligible viscous effects, they're basically saying, yeah, please use, use Bernoulli. We're not worried about energy losses. This is not an energy equation. So go ahead and use Bernoulli, okay? Now, you, I mean, otherwise you could, you could use the energy equation. And that is always preferable. Um, but in this case, you know, there's no losses. So we're going to be okay. Because if we're going to use Bernoulli, then we have to start thinking about, you know, how we're going to deal with these terms. And so the first thing that I want to deal with is, well, in this case, I'm going to go for the low-hanging fruit, which is that the, the Zs, the elevations of 1 and 2, they're the same. Okay, so I could say that they're the datum, or I could just note that they're the same, and so they just cancel each other out. Okay, cool. All right, so now once we've done that, I want to get P1 and P2, and the way we do that is with this manometer, because that is our method. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up to here, and this height right here is going to be, uh, we'll call it H. Okay. Um, so that's going from, you know, it's going right to there. All right, so let's see. We're going to start at P1. I'm going to go down to here. So that's going through, a, through the kerosene. Uh, let's see, the, that it, distance is h plus little h. Okay, then I'm going to go straight over here. Nothing, nothing happens interesting. Then I'm going to go up. So I'm going to go minus gamma mercury times lowercase h. 
And then I'm going to go up here. So I'm going to go minus gamma k times h, and that's going to get me back to 0.2. Okay, so that's my, that's your, um, what do they call these things? <laughs> Manometer equation. Uh, now, of course, that one's a little ugly, so we're going to clean it up, right? So we'll note that this gamma kh is going to cancel with this gamma kh. Um, and, you know, I'm going to bring this p1 over to the other side. Um, like this. And then I'm going to divide the whole thing by gamma k. And so what I'm going to end up with is p2 minus p1 over gamma k equals... Let's see here, H minus gamma H mercury divided by gamma kerosene times H, okay? So um, we'll pull that H out because it's annoying and I'll get one minus uh, SHG over SK, gamma water, gamma water, right? So I just kind of expand those specific weights um, to be relative to water. Oops, sorry, there shouldn't be an H right there, should there? Okay, noting that then those will cancel out. Oh, sorry. So P2 minus P1 over gamma K equals, so that lowercase h is 0 0.300 meters times one minus 13.6 divided by 0 0.8. Okay, so P2 minus P1 over gamma K equals negative 4.8 meters. Okay, what this means is that P1 is a much higher pressure than P2, okay, which would be our expectation because P1 is driving the fluid down, okay, relative to P1, right? So, um, okay, so that's how we do the manometer equation. So we can rearrange this, so that's going to plug in nicely. V1 squared on 2G. Oh, by the way, this should have been specific. Um, yeah, gravity, sorry. Gravity. Okay, if you somehow you know screwed that up, I'll obviously uh, grade uh, nicer. Okay, so let's see here. Equals, I'm just bringing this over to the other side, right? P2 minus P1 over gamma k, okay, plus v2 squared on 2g. All right, so now we're going to deal with those velocities. I got something to plug in here that's going to be nice and beautiful. So now I got to deal with these velocities. Okay, and I've got a diameter here of, what is that, 75 millimeters, and I've got one here of 25 millimeters. Now, I already know that I haven't graded this yet, but I know that this is the number of meters of that first diameter. Um, this conversion is going gonna, is gonna to throw a lot of people for a loop. Um, but anyway, so let's go down here. Let's do the continuity equation. And what we're going to do is we are going to um, solve for V1 or V2 in terms of each other. So I'm going to say, okay, well, uh, V1A1 equals V2A2. Okay, let's see here. V1A1, so that's pi D1 squared on... 4 equals v2 pi d2 squared on 4. Okay, so the pi under the 4, the pi under the 4, those are going to go away. And um, let's see, how did I do this? So let's say uh, I'm going to make, I'm going to rearrange this. So I've got v1 d1 squared on d2 squared equals v2. So d1 over d2, well, let's see, let's see. I mean, you guys already know I do this, but um, I hope you do. So I'm doing D1 over D2 squared. So D1 over D2 squared. D1 divided by D2, that's a factor of 3, right? So this is basically V1 times 3 squared equals V2. So V2 equals 9V1, okay? And that's what we're going to work with. So I'm going to go back up here, and wherever I see a V2, I'm going to write 9V1. Okay, so we're going to put that right here. Come on. 9V1. Okay, now the number one, another top error here is people forgetting to square that 9, so it becomes negative 81. Or, excuse me, it becomes 81. 
Um, so anyway, so let's uh, let's go ahead and solve this. Um, you know, P2 minus P1 over gamma K, I'll plug in for that, which is going to be uh, a negative 4.8 meters. All right. And so I just solve, I'm going to just solve this equation for V2. Okay, so um, oh, I guess I could, if we're, if we're plugging in now, we might as well plug it all in. All right, let's plug in right here. It's going to be 2 times uh, 9.81. Um, don't you just wish that number could have somehow worked out to be uh, 10 or something? Anyway, so let's, uh, let's, let's rearrange this. Uh, on the left, I'm going to get negative 80 V1 squared over 2 times 9.81 meters per second squared. That's negative 4.8 meters. And if you solve this, don't forgetting, not forgetting that you have to take the square root of it for that thing right there, you end up with uh, 1.08 five o meters per second which is great and useful but then we remember that the whole point of this whole problem is we wanted q so q equals v1 a1 so q equals 1.0850 meters per second times pi uh, i don't remember what that diameter was over four what is that diameter squared over four 75 millimeters diameter, 0 0.075 meters um, squared. Okay, so Q, if we do that, is going to make a very small number. Um, 0 0.004793 meters, cubic meters per second. So Q equals 4.79 times 10 to the negative 3 cubic meters per second. Okay. That's it. That's all she wrote. Okay, hopefully this was uh, helpful. Um, let me know if I can um, help in any way. All right, y'all be easy. Have a good one. Bye.